for more on the insider training probe, we're joined by Bradley Bondi. He's a former enforcement counsel for the SEC and now a partner at Cod, uh, Codwallader, Wickersham and Taft. Uh, Brad, thanks so much uh, for joining us. And uh, I know that you say the media has been focused on the wrong thing, right? We keep calling this an insider training probe, but none of those arrested last week actually in, were involved in insider trading, right? That's true. The, the persons who were arrested and charged last week were charged with conspiracy and wire fraud, not actually insider trading. And that's important to note because both of those charges are very broad and carry severe penalties, but they're not insider trading per se. Right, but they're related though, are they not? Uh, absolutely. Um, all of this is related to the government's investigation into, into insider trading. Um, so ultimately we may see charges uh, on insider trading, mm -hmm. but these four individuals were not charged with insider trading per se. Okay, so these charges, though, of, of conspiracy and wire fraud, what did they tell you about what, uh, you know, what the U.S. attorney is preparing for? I, I think reading the criminal complaints and from the media reports, I think that the next step for the prosecutors is to actually bring charges against the persons who use the information and traded on this information. The four individuals last week, to my understanding, didn't actually trade on the information themselves. Mm -hmm. They conveyed it to someone else. And are they going to get them to turn on their, I guess, conspirators or, or, or their clients? Yeah, I think that, um, that this is going to expand, certainly. It, it appears from the complaint that prosecutors used confidential informants, um, undercover operatives, and, and wiretaps to gain information. Um, that all seems to suggest that this is going to be a much broader investigation and that more charges will follow. Uh, from what you've read in the reports then, Bradley, are these charges going to stick against these four individuals? Well, it's, it's too early really to say, and we have to keep in mind that these are only allegations, that these persons are innocent until proven guilty. The government has the burden to prove these charges in court, um, and that there are various legal and factual defenses that could be raised to these types of charges. Mm -hmm. So it's really too early to say how strong the government's case is, but it certainly appears that the government has obtained quite a bit of information in this right. investigation. Right, to act upon it. Then how long before the SEC mm -hmm. acts? Well, that's up to really the SEC in conversation with the Department of Justice. Uh, in these type of cases, the SEC could bring a parallel action or they could wait and, until the criminal charges are resolved before bringing their own actions. That's really up to, between the SEC and the Department of Justice to figure out um, if the SEC is going to proceed forward now or if they will wait. Uh, and Brad, what do you make of this involving a large part technology companies? Well, technology companies ultimately, uh, uh, usually use suppliers and vendors and various other uh, affiliates to assemble their products. Um, and so in those instances, um, you'll, you'll see various bits and pieces of information relating to the product in various different hands. Uh, and that seems to be what this investigation involves, is suppliers to other technology companies hmm. and the information that those suppliers had about the ultimate company at issue.